Hey, you crazy cats, welcome to Leaving Crazy Town, where we navigate the roller coaster of relationships, mental health, and personal transformation with humor as our trusty seatbelt. Hi, I'm Sarah, and with my buddy Finn, we're here to share our real stories, expert insights, practical tips to help you break free from codependency, reclaim your life, and find freedom. So, whether you're wrestling with boundary issues, craving connections that won't ghost you, or just here for a front row seat to the wild ride of self-discovery, you've come to the right place. So buckle up, we're leaving Crazy Town. Hey, welcome to Leaving Crazy Town with Finn and Sarah. What are we gonna talk about today, Sarah? We're gonna talk about a very important topic tonight. And we're gonna address the biggest, most common question slash confusion of our fans and audience. And what is that question, Finn? Why is Finn's Bitmo blue? Why people everyone have... is so concerned about my Bitmo, I do not know. We've had people ask if I'm depressed because yes. I'm blue. We've had publicity <laughs> people tell us you can't be blue on Bitmo, Finn, because it's going to confuse people. And people need to know why you're blue and so forth. So I, yes. I considered changing it, but... You know, I love my Bitmo and I'm not changing it. It's That's just right. Me. And there's so, a reason. Yeah, we thought we'd talk today about why is my Bitmo blue and how it relates to codependency. Yes. Yeah. It's critical. So critical. So critical. So I know before, back before I transitioned to Finn, I found the Bitmo to be fun. It was a way to express myself. I got to create a male Bitmo, even though I was presenting female in the world. And what made that a little easier for me, and, and I was a little fearful of people's judgments, was to make my Bitmo blue. Like, I'm a blue guy. So I wasn't really like a man. You know, I was like an alien, a blue guy. It gave me the freedom to express myself. Have you ever had like this? You see people who are very conservative looking, but their bitmos have mohawks or right. they have earrings or guys who don't have beards. Sometimes they'll put beards on that. Some people make their bitmo look like themselves and other people, I think, make their bitmo look like what they would like to express out in the world, but they're not able to yet. And for me, it was a way to freely express who I was before I was ready to actually become that in the world. Yes. And why is and, that critical? And blue is my favorite color. <laughs> and and blue is your favorite color. Okay. Yeah. And how you're relating this to codependency to me is so significant because we've talked a lot about when you're in active codependency from fear, one of the huge consequences of that is a lack of self-expression and a lack of doing, saying, feeling what you want. So uh, Finn was giving, we were talking about the example of say you want to cut your hair, but you don't cut your hair because of what other people would think, but you really want short hair. I mean, these seem like small things, but they add up. So the fact that Finn is keeping his bit mo blue and it's his self-expression to me is part of codependency recovery. It's doing something, expressing your full self, identifying as who you really want to be. And to me, that is critical. Yeah. And I know, like, I, I hear women say it all the time. Like, I would love to cut my hair, but my husband doesn't like short hair or this or that. Or, oh, I'd love to wear such and such, but yes. I don't, you know, won't fit my whatever. But I just say, like, find whatever way you can to express yourself in small ways. For me, it was like baby steps, right? I wasn't yes. able to fully express that I was transgender or come out as Finn, but I did it in baby steps, like first in my bit mode. Then I talked to my friends about it. It, it brought up conversations that we could talk yes. about. And then eventually I was able to sort of step in the world as myself, but I'm not about to paint myself blue because, you know, that would just plain old be ridiculous. And when I showed up to work, they're going to be like, oh, what now you're transitioning to an alien or something. And, you know, that's just not going to fly. This is just so awesome because I really think, I mean, the whole core we talk about a lot. Someone asked me last night in a group, what's the definition of codependency? And of course, there's a number of definitions if you Google it. My definition is really the inability to be who you want to be. And that's exactly what we're talking about today is 
What are some things we're going to ask you guys? What are some ways you are being or not being that you wish you could change, but you're not changing because you're afraid your friends won't like it or your husband or wife won't like it? Are you in a job you hate? Are you in a relationship where you're not happy? What else, bud? Are you Anything, not like? I would Anything. say those are like huge things. Start with little yeah, things. Yeah, start like, with small things. Are Good you point. not wearing the shoes you want to wear? Are you wearing heels because it's expected of you, but your feet are uncomfortable? You'd rather wear Ugh. sneakers or flats or like me, I like to be barefoot, you know, flip flops or whatever. Like, is there something small that you could look at? I like the big yeah. thing, like, am I in a job or a marriage? I, I know. Like, okay. Those are scary. Great point. Like, let's dial take little down. baby steps. Baby <laughs> okay, steps is dial- like. Well, because not because I don't take big steps today, but they all start with baby steps. And the more you get confident saying, hey, this is me, I'm, you know, my blue bitmo. And then I, you know, the next step is you can talk about it. They're just little (laughs) things you could do. Yes. Are you fully expressing who you want to express? And if you're not, why not? Like, what is the fear? What are you worried about? Are you worried about? what other people are going to think, losing people. Like, what is really the fear about? And I would start, like Finn says, start with something small so then you can kind of walk yourself through it and notice what happens. Does it make you feel good? Does it make you feel scared? Does it make you anxious? Or does it really feel like you're expressing more of who you are? Is there something in your life, Sarah, that you're not expressing the way you wish you could? You know, it's funny you said that what I mean, not right this second, but I was thinking when I turned 60 that I did cut all my hair off. And I know hair is like a huge thing. And every time we talk about hair on this podcast, people comment about trauma, hair trauma. So I remember feeling totally liberated. I cut my hair super short. I slicked it back and it was awesome. And I loved it for a while. And I will think about that, though. I will think about, is there anything I'm not expressing right now? I'm pretty self-expressed and I pretty Mm. much do what I want. And that's what it it is really, too, is it's like, are you doing what you really want to do on a daily basis? I mean, obviously you have commitments, but that's another thing. Like doing things just for others rather than for yourself is huge. Yeah. And that's uh, that's the expression stuff, too. You know, like, yes, um, because you're influenced by others. I'm pretty self-expressed at this point, too. I have no problem. <laughs> no flies out of my mouth left and right. Or like I literally do what I want to do. And I'm not. Yes. You know, it'll be uncomfortable to make a small change even, but they build on themselves and your self-confidence and being yourself grows as you take these baby steps. So I would just, you know, pick a couple of things. Maybe, you know, maybe even if you're not going to be with people, like say you want to wear something different or wear your hair different or do something different, hop in the car, go on a thing by yourself, but do it different. Get gradually get out in the world. It's easier, I think, to express yourself around strangers than it is to express yourself around the people you know at first. So maybe really get, just point. get comfortable yourself. Yeah. All really right. good point. We're out of here. Right. You, you so guys are out of here. Come on. Like, be your seatbelt. Be Do yourself. something new this week. Be yourself. We love be it. Be a blue bit, Mo. Come on now. Embrace it. <laughs> Embrace shirtless. it. Nobody asks why I'm shirtless. They just ask why I'm blue. I mean, We come forgot on. to even address the shirtless thing. Okay. Another joy moment. To- <laughs> we don't need to address that. It's just okay. who wants to wear clothes. I mean, come on. Fasten your seatbelt. We love We're it. Out We're out of here. Thanks for listening to Leaving Crazy Town. We hope today's episode offered you valuable insights and tools to help navigate your relationship. If you found our discussion helpful, please rate, review, and subscribe to our podcast and share it with a friend. Misery loves company, right? Stay connected with us on social media and visit our website for additional resources and updates on future episodes. Until next time, remember that breaking free from codependency is a journey, and we're here to help you every step of the way. And hey, if all else fails, at least you'll have a few laughs. So buckle up. We're leaving crazy town.